Hey, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're going to calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Bobby Brenner claims his reputation was trashed after a tennis player had him kicked out of a charity event. Katie Berkeley says Mr. Brenner was the one who was trashed, and that's what got him in trouble. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Please be seated. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Brenner versus Berkeley. Mr. Brenner, you are suing Ms. Berkeley for $2,426 for defamation of character. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. Please tell the court what happened. Well, I would like to start out by saying I've been a huge fan of tennis and a part of that community for a very long time. I've gone all over the world checking out different tournaments and played a bit myself. Uh, with that kind of, you know, being really what I care about the most. And how this all came to be is we uh, ended up at a charity event about seven months ago that was going to be played at my club, the Desert Tennis Club. Uh, and that was where this altercation initially happened. I have been following Miss Berkeley's uh, playing career and also as well as Brianna. I've been you know, very interested in seeing how they both play. They're both great talents. So they started playing each other. They were the two uh, opponents there. and. Uh, it was, you know, it's, it's a charity game, so it wasn't anything serious. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, Katie was able to get a couple of aces, which I thought looked a little out. So I yelled out, kiss my ace, after that happened. And, you know, I got some laughs and everything like that. But, so I didn't think it was a big deal. But then she comes up, Katie does, and yells to us, shut up. And so we're like, okay, it's not a big deal. This is just a game. We're just trying to have fun. Uh, Brianna ends up winning the first, the first one, the first um, set there, and uh, you know we're kind of getting a little into it. It's basically shouting, who's we? Yeah, you know, me, the crowd. I'm, we're kind of getting into it. We're uh, cheering on Brianna, uh, trying to you know get her to win the next set, obviously. But uh, Katie starts really taking it to her and actually ends up winning. So they're all tied up at that point, and that's uh, one set apiece. And so I start getting the crowd into it again, start chanting, Brianna, Brianna, like that, to kind of get them more into it. And what, getting... what is your point? The point is, is she called me out afterwards. She actually had the announcer come out and say, please be quiet. And she grabbed the mic, yelled, get that drunk guy in the yellow t-shirt out of here. He's ruining the game. So I had to be kicked out of it mid-match and basically was treated like, you know, so, some So, Mr. Drunk Brenner, alcoholic. I want to be clear. You took it upon yourself to decide that this entire tennis charity event needed to be more lively. So you started to um, engage the audience and, and, and start chants. Well, I mean, it's it's a charity thing. It's not a big deal. It's not like we're at the U.S. Open or anything like that. So, I mean, it was just we were just doing it in good fun. And I mean, so other people I want to come to you, Miss Berkeley. He says you took the mic and told him to get this guy out of here. Yes, that was. You could hear him and hear the crowd while you're trying to play. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that was during the second set, but there had been multiple times that he had called out um, in the crowd in the first set as well, and it had some, it had escalated, and he was instigating the crowd. Because I don't know, I've never been to a tennis match where they're shouting and chanting like football. Have you in the gallery? No. <laughs> no. Have you ever seen live tennis? I, I mean, even on TV, it doesn't look like that. So, so were you feeling like this is going to be a lighthearted day? All the chants and stuff are going to happen? No, Your Honor. I wasn't. Um, I'm, I was playing against one of my good friends, Brianna, who's here with me today. Uh, she's a great opponent. We're basically at the same level, so you never really know who's going to win. Um, so I did take it very seriously. We're also trying to raise money for a charity, um, and I thought that's where the focus should be that day. What prompted you to take the microphone and ask that he be removed? So, um, thank you, Your Honor. In the first set, um, he had been calling out, kiss my ace several times, which I thought was rude and disrespectful. I had 
um, shot a couple of different aces and um, I think it was my fourth ace and he continued to call it out. The organizer and the umpire kept asking the crowd to be quiet and then I did, I went up to the stand where he was sitting and I asked him to be quiet. Um, then in the second set, it only got worse when he started chanting out Brianna's name. Um, so that's when I, I spoke to the organizer and I spoke on the mic and asked to have the gentleman in the yellow shirt removed. He seems to be drunk and he is ruining the game. Coming up. You keep talking about your life being damaged and you've been harmed, but you're the only one so far in the testimony that's been acting a fool. <laughs> <laughs> and later. Why did you quit, Miss So? I quit because there is a situation I couldn't handle no more, Your Honor. I discovered that Mr. Howard was having an affair. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Bobby Brenner, who brought Katie Berkeley to court for damaging his reputation. So you make that request mr brenner what happens someone comes over to you and what happens i was escorted out and i did so as after asked obviously i didn't make any big deal out of it but the real problem is what happened after that i was essentially defamed by you know they kicked me out of the club for a full year suspended me on that uh, started to actually get into my personal life i coached my son's little league team and now they got wind of that and so you presented here the letter of suspension you've got a letter of suspension yes. Yes, for from suspension the tennis from club. the tennis club for one year and also from my son's Little League games, which I think went a bit too far in that situation. And I also work at a um, memorabilia shop, sports memorabilia shop, as a manager. We were getting constant calls all the time in terms of just kind of harassment because it started circulating online on Twitter and all these different things. And it was, you know, starting to really ruin my life. It actually affected my work day and I actually ended up having to take a month off of unpaid just to get away from it and to draw a little flack away from the business so that they didn't get any more deep water and connection. So to these are lost wages. This is correct for one month of unpaid uh, of wages there for or unpaid time off I should say. Okay but your suit is for defamation of character. This is an evidence that suggests that someone defamed you. Well, this is actually what occurred. So we have here, I was tagged in this Twitter, I'm sorry, yeah, let me get that to you. Uh, I was tagged in this Twitter thing for Kiss My Ace, so I was called out online on social media. I actually even had an uh, article written against me in the paper. Kiss My Ace? Yes. But isn't this what you were saying at the tennis match? I mean, it was, if, it, if I would have said an actual curse word, I'd be like, okay, maybe. But like, this was no, something that I, was just a cheat. No, what I'm asking you is a yes or no question. Yes. Is are. this not what yes. you were chanting at the tennis match? Yes. Yelling out something like that is one thing, but, you know, going after me and basically trying to damage my life and actually harm me in that way is way over the line compared okay, to what actually I, I wanna happens. Get, I want to get back. You keep talking about your life being damaged and you've been harmed, but you're the only one so far in the testimony that's been acting a fool. <laughs> I don't, honestly, I don't see how in that situation that I was, you know, deserving of that much, you know, hit so back on me. who defamed you? I need to hear testimony about the defamation. When she said that I was a drunk and yelled that out and basically was like, get that drunk guy out of here, that was the moment where I was like, I'm not that kind of person. I don't need to be um, identified in that way. And when it actually started getting into the paper and everything like that, it went a little too far. So, so okay, so you're saying in the paper, it was all about you being um, ejected yes. and it's about Miss Berkeley saying you were right. a drunk guy. Right. And so then everybody at the tennis match thought you were drunk yeah they just when think really that you were just obnoxious if that's yeah if that's the way okay. we can put it that was technically yeah i want to go over to miss berkeley and i want to hear from your witness as well ma'am as a matter of fact let me yeah. hear from your witness now please stand up state your name for the court uh, my name is brianna petty now miss B petty from previous testimony um we've heard that you were miss berkeley's opponent that day correct could you also hear all this screaming I could, yes. You could. Mm -hmm. How did it affect your play? I mean, tennis is not a game where the crowd is supposed to be loud. You know, fans can cheer, but not while we're playing. So, you know, this isn't football or basketball where everyone's supposed to be loud. While we're playing, it's supposed to be quiet so we can focus on 
the, the match at hand. Right, so you were disturbed, Ms. Berkeley was disturbed, Mr. Brenner was just the only one having fun. Well, maybe the crowd I was too. I don't think I was the only one. All right. The crowd was having fun with it. The problem is, is that when you're acting like a person who is not aware of their surroundings and is not um, acting and behaving with the decorum necessary or required or expected in a certain situation, it is not unreasonable for somebody to think, this guy must be drunk, right? Because what person, especially a person who belongs to a tennis club, watches tennis often, you knew these players, so for you to behave that way, it's not unreasonable for her to think this guy is out here drunk, acting a fool, making everybody chant, get him out of here, because at the end of the day, the focus shouldn't be on you, it should be on the charity that they're there to raise money for. It is nothing wrong with trying to have fun, but I think time and place are important here, and your judgment was off. With that said, when she made that comment, you really did the damage to your own reputation with your own behavior. It wasn't her calling you drunk that did it. It was your behavior, period. That's damage you did to yourself. With that said, judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. This is ridiculous. You know what you did. I'm 19 wrong. years old, ma'am. Yeah, maybe you should learn a little more responsibility before you ruin someone else's life. Maybe you shouldn't take a 19-year-old to court over a tennis match for a charity. Well, I guess you get to win anyway, so fine. Coming up. I made those purchases for his mistress. Okay. And well, you have the proof, you're let me move these papers over. <laughs> Let's get down to the real nitty gritty. Were you or were you not? having an affair. Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not at your school, we're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Steve and Julia Howard claims his former assistant made suspicious purchases with the company credit card before she quit. Lexi So says Mr. Howard approved all the charges as they were gifts for his mistress. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Howard versus So. Mr. and Mrs. Howard, you are suing Ms. So for $3,491.97 for unauthorized charges made using company funds. Is that correct? Yes, that's yes, correct. Honor. And Ms. So, you say that all of the purchases made were authorized. Yes, you are. All right, I'll start with the plaintiffs. Mr. and Ms. Howard, yes, please tell the court what happened. Okay, I'm here to sue my husband's former personal assistant for unauthorized charges that she made with the business card. You and your husband own the business together? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, again, he gave her this business card that he allowed her to use, but just for business matters. All right, let's get to the point where you feel like you were made aware that there was some unauthorized charges going on. So upon her quitting, uh, I went in because we had to do an audit, go over the books. So I went in went over things and I've seen a lot of suspicious transactions that should not have been made as far as to technologies and jewelry. Why did you quit, Miss So? I quit because there is a situation I couldn't handle no more, Your Honor. I discovered that Mr. Howard was having an affair. Okay. Is that true, Mr. Howard? You know. I, I can't I can't speak on that. All I know is I'm a businessman. I put in a position of power. She was my personal assistant. I helped her with anything just she tell needed. The truth. So maybe she's just jealous or maybe she just upset. Just that, tell you know. the truth. Coming up. Your Honor, I have a witness that can prove all I'm saying. Sean, please escort the witness into the courtroom. We're back with a dispute between Steve and Julia Howard and his former assistant, Lexi So, over questionable credit card purchases. What 
information did you were you privy to? Those are the purchases that he's suing me for. I made those purchases for his mistress. And well, I have the proof. Your let honor. me move these papers over. <laughs> Let's get down to the real nitty gritty. Were you or were you not having an affair? Well, since you don't want to answer, I mean, I've got, you know, I'm, I mean, you know, my wife is at home. My personal assistant left. I got to be in charge of rear hiring another personal assistant. You know, I'm by myself as a businessman. You know, it's very hard to sustain a business being by yourself, being lonely. What is he talking you know? about? Oh my God. Your Honor, I have a witness that can prove all I'm saying. Where's your witness? Sean, please escort the witness into the courtroom. Ma'am, you've already been sworn in. State your name for the court. Sarah Jones. Ms. Jones, what do you know about this situation? Well, um, I started working for Mr. Howard about three years ago. He hired me. I'm a freelance graphic designer. And he told me that he was separated from his wife and that they were getting a divorce. He told you he was separated? Yes, Your Honor. Are you all separated, Ms. No. Howard? Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You thought he was separated, but yes. the truth is he wasn't even separated. I'm learning that now, yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Howard, do you have anything to add? Uh, Sounds like you were having an affair with Ms. Jones. No, I just had her help him on my new logos, that's it. So you're not admitting to an affair? She helped with my logos, she helped with, uh, you know, the infrastructure of my business. We had a few times Can where, you, you know, we met. Can you stop for once? So, Your Honor, the, um, what's been submitted into evidence, those are gifts that were given to me, okay, by Mr. Howard. Oh, oh who is God. buying a diamond necklace for just a simple friend? I just love doing business. That's all I can say. <laughs> well, See, Mr. Howard, you definitely sticking to your story. Your Honor, I love taking care of my people. I just love looking out for women. Black You're just going to stick to this story, right? Minority. That we didn't have any. Your Honor, we were in love with each other. Love? We, we, love? we had really? something special. I thought we had something special. It's just business. It's nothing personal. Ooh. All right. Well, oh my God. it is what it is. You don't seem to care too much, so I hope that you are equally as unbothered and indifferent by not getting your money back today. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. Are you ready to be honest with your wife? Yeah, I'm ready to be honest with her. She already know. I mean, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean, know. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean none of this to happen. Cover.